Hey guys, welcome back to the Hashraptor YouTube channel. Today we are unboxing the Asus ROG Strix 5700 gaming graphics card. We're gonna get some initial stock hash rates off of it. We're gonna try to flash it with the XT BIOS, see if we get in any, any trouble there. So yeah, all right guys, let's open this thing up and see what we got. All right, just a couple quick notes from the specs. It looks like there's three display ports, one HDMI port, powered obviously by the AMD RX 5700, eight gigabytes GDDR6 memory, seven nanometer Fidelity FX FreeSync 2 HDR, RDNA architecture, OC edition, eight gigabytes GDDR6 PCIe 4.0, and Aurora Sync technology. Okay, let's get this thing opened up. This is my second 5700 and it still surprises me how big they are when I take them out of the box. You can see right there for power, we've got eight pin plus six pin. Love the look, the dark look. Very nice looking. Display ports and HDMI. And check this out, this massive, massive heat sink right here. So it's got an aluminum array and it's supposed to have a copper base. I'm not gonna take this thing apart right now, but it's supposed to have a copper base for heat dissipation. Some of the early reviews said that there was problem securing the heat sink to the PCB to properly dissipate heat, but hopefully they figured out some of those quality control issues and we'll be able to hold temperatures pretty steady. Thing is just a hoss. So the construction feels really, really solid. It's clearly a very tough metal back plate there. Some kind of plastic shell. It might be some sort of composite though. This feels, it definitely feels more sturdy than the XFX 5700 XT, that raw two that we unboxed. LED on off switch. It's got six, it looks like six heat pipes that I can see. It's got a metal reinforced frame to prevent sagging, which was potentially one of the early concerns with the 5700 XT variant, which should be nearly identical in construction. So it was sort of a quality control issue. And from a temperature standpoint, the T-junction should idle at about 35 degrees Celsius. Okay, so I'm excited to get this put into a rig. Let's get some initial hash rates. Let's get some initial temperatures and uh, let's see what we can get before we do any BIOS modding to this card. Okay guys, so here we are at the desktop and this 5700 out of the box, no BIOS mods, just with stock settings. You can see right here, it looks like it's at 1025 on the voltage, 1750 on the core clock and memory. And the only thing that I adjusted here just to be safe was I bumped up the fan speed to 80% and locked it. And you can see right here, we're actually staying really cool at 49 degrees Celsius. And our memory temp is up a little bit. It's at 88 degrees Celsius. It's still not awful, but to keep in mind, we haven't made any adjustments at all. And mining F over here, we are at 50.588 mega hash per second, and you can see it's been mining for just about an hour now. And by the way, guys, I still haven't figured out how to find the memory type on these 5700. So if anyone has a suggestion there, I think there's a trick to it, but if you could let me know, that would be awesome. <laughs> and the drivers we're using are the Adrenaline 20.8.2 drivers. And let's check our wattage at the wall. And you can see we're at 259, 260 watts at the wall. And we're figuring our idle is between 80 and 85 watts on this system here. So let me capture this in the spreadsheet and then I'm gonna do some tweaking to our overclock settings and I will be right back. Okay, just getting our idle wattage again tonight and we're between 78, it looks like about 82. Somewhere in there is where it's settling in. So again, we'll call it 80 just to be sort of conservative. 
Hey, I just wanted to show you this real quick. You may notice if you look in Phoenix Miner, it says no GT value specified, switching to auto tune. And then it'll proceed to warn you that while it's auto tuning, your hash rate may be lower than it otherwise would be. And I was hunting around trying to figure out where I get that auto tune value from once it's set because I was scrolling through text and scrolling through text. And I just wanted to show you real quick how I found it so I could set it in the minor and not have it auto tune every time I fire this up. So for me, if I just go to the shortcut and I just right click and open file location, I do have the log files on here. And if you open up one where you've been mining on for a little bit, so let me open this one right here, and you do a control F for find, and you type in auto tune, and you go find next, eventually it's gonna scroll down through everywhere it was trying to auto tune. Getting there, there we go. <laughs> okay, so you can see I just skipped down a whole bunch of times until I got to auto tune found best GT value six. Now, I'll be honest with you, I'm not exactly sure you know what that does or what and I don't know if that's I don't know what that is but um, it's interesting because for my XFX 5700 it came in at 20 and I don't know if that was you know because of the BIOS mods I don't know I don't know so anyways I'm gonna go ahead and set this to dash 6 for now and I'll keep an eye and just see if uh, Maybe I'll do an auto-tune later and see if that changes once I do some BIOS mods. But anyway, there you go. Just wanted you to know since I was looking for that and I had never set that before. So let's see how low it will let us set the core voltage. So max 1300. Yeah, it's so 800 there. And core clocks. 875, 875. And let's apply that. Okay, so it reset that. It wouldn't let us go lower than 1750 on the memory clock. And it took 875 on the core clock and 800 up here on the core voltage. And you can see we're at 775 millivolts there. So we'll definitely need to play around with the BIOS here. But um, let me just fire this up and see what happens. And we are pulling in a whopping 38.7 mega hash. But that is at 93 watts and if you look at what that brings us from an efficiency standpoint that's still 0 0.4 0 0.4 mega hash per watt now that's measured at the driver or 0 0.37 at the wall and what i'm finding with these 5700s is the driver is reporting within five to i don't know 20 watts when it's at you know max power it might be a discrepancy of between 10 and 20 then but you know, on the low end, 5 watts, and at the high end, maybe 10 to 20. So it's actually in the ballpark. Um, if you didn't have a kilowatt that you were using to measure things at the wall, you could at least get a sense of what's going on. But I do always recommend, you know, understanding the difference between what's going on between the driver and what you're seeing at the wall as you make adjustments for your overclocks. Okay, I just stepped up the core clock to 1200. That's the only thing I changed from that lowest stock BIOS settings. And you can see we just, now we just started mining here. We're already at 50.43 mega hash per second. And that's at about 108 watts as reported at the driver. And 202, 201 at the wall. So a nice little bump up there. Jumping to about 50, 50.5 mega hash per second. I just wanted to show you the calculations real quick. Check this out. With those settings, that is 0.47 mega hash per watt at the driver or 0.40 mega hash per watt at the wall. For those of you that don't want to do any BIOS mods, you don't want to take on the opportunity to, to break your card. So pretty solid if you wanted to just stop right here and start mining, just you know, not really push the card. But you know, we all want to push it, right? We want to see how far we can go. So I'm going to keep playing with this, guys, and I'll be back. So up next, I am going to try BIOS modding and putting this 5700 onto the 5700 XT BIOS. Now, just so you guys know, maybe I'll cover this in another video, the ROG Strix BIOS and the performance is a little controversial since its launch, and there's been a couple of updates to it. I'm not really going to get into that right now, but you can do some Googling on your own if you want to take a look at what's going on there. But I'm going to try the 5700 XT BIOS. 
So now I need to do a BIOS mod on this car to try to update it to the 5700 XT model BIOS. And let me just say right up front a disclaimer. If you don't really know what you're doing, if you're not comfortable with this, or you don't want to do the research and take the risk, then just don't do any BIOS modding whatsoever. Just put your card in, find the best efficiency settings that you can get to, and you know be happy with that they mine pretty well out of the box as it is so i just wanted to throw that out there guys before you get into any trouble because anytime you buy this mod you know you're you're taking a risk so i just wanted to say i'm not going to go in depth on to how to do this here because it's i feel like it's been covered quite a bit i'll touch on a few parts but basically i'll leave links in the show notes you want to go to Igor's lab and he's got a complete walkthrough step-by-step -step, on how to do BIOS modding and the reason I'm having to do this is because the ASUS BIOS utility that is used they do have instructions on their website but it is locked to the specific model card that you have so if I have a 5700 I can't upgrade that using their utility to the 5700 XT because they don't want people doing that so I have to do this on my own and what I did is I went out to Tech Power Up and I grabbed one of the latest BIOS from there using the Red BIOS editor and more power tools here along with the flashing utility that they recommend in this article I am going to flash the BIOS to a 5700 XT BIOS so you can see I've got the BIOS right here I've downloaded the AMD VB flash.exe which is again in the downloads links right here on Igor's lab and I also want to point out that if you want to see a little bit more on this Red Panda has done several really good videos on this and I know that Serpent X Special Forces has also done quite a bit on the AMD side, so definitely be sure to check out their channels. Sub to both of them if you haven't already. What I need to do is get this flash going, and fingers crossed, guys, you know, I'm, I did get this from Tech Power Up, and I feel like it's probably a good BIOS. I noted that there were several of the same version number that had been uploaded recently, so I'm going to try this, and fingers crossed it goes well. For convenience, I copied in the commands into a text file here that I'm going to have to enter from the DOS prompt. Basically, we have to unlock the ROM that's on there. And by the way, I have set this to performance mode. This card has two BIOS, performance and silent. If I switch this to the left, it's in performance mode. And to the right, it's this switch right here, uh, I'm in silent mode. And then this button, in case you're wondering, is just... LED lights on and off, off, on, off, on. <laughs> you get it. So, yeah, so I'm in performance mode, and that's where we are going to flash this BIOS to. So, yeah, let me, uh, let me flash, and hopefully everything goes well, and I will be right back. Okay, so I've unlocked it using this command right here, and you can see that the ROM is unlocked. And I am about to flash this using the ROM that I downloaded from Tech Power Up. So fingers crossed. And cannot program with input vBIOS image file. Hmm. Okay, let me take a look at what's going on and I'll be back. So if I come over to Igor's lab, there's actually a couple flash utilities and I got the one that works for all AMD cards. But when I got this version 2.93 that's only for the 5700 and XT, that allowed me to do the dash F which forced the flash to the card. So I'm about to reboot here. We'll see if it works for the first time. And I am a little bit nervous but uh, let's see what happens. All right, we did it, guys. Check this out. GPU-Z is showing this as an AMD Radeon RX 5700 XT. That's what we were looking for. Okay, so our clocks did change a bit here. Let's do some testing. Let's fire up the miner and see what this upgrade really got us here. Right away, I'm noticing I can bring this up to about 1900 where I couldn't do that before. There you go you can see it's capped at 1900 but at least I can go at least I can go that high for now all right check this out so it did give us uh, quite a bump here look at this I cannot get the core voltage below 827 or about 831 millivolts so 
I may have to try command line and see if it doesn't crash it. Yeah, let me see if I can get this down. Otherwise, we're definitely going to have to go to more power tools probably in another video and try to get this efficiency a bit lower here. Okay, so it looked like that worked. We're at 800 millivolts here, and all I did was in the batch file command line, I added the dash CV DDC 800, and that seemed to set it. Now, we've got to let auto tuning take place here, and I will play around with these core clocks and memory clocks and see how far we can go with this. We did get the 5700 XT BIOS loaded, and I did a few tests with that, but I'll be completely honest with you, I need to spend some more time with it. I just kind of ran out of time on this video. We ran about four tests, and then we ran a few others, and the car just kind of got crashy, and we never really got any better efficiency than we had on the 5700 stock BIOS. I Like I said, I need to spend some more time with this card. I need to get in and do some BIOS modifications. I think I'm going to try playing with the stock 5700 BIOS and do some more power tool mods there as well as the 5700 XT BIOS. And just see which one of them is better for this particular card right here. But uh, yeah, and the memory temps were a little bit higher. It just wasn't quite as slick as this XFX 5700 XT that we did testing on the other day. So I'll keep working on this. We'll work to get some better efficiency here. I'm gonna play around with it, like I said, and uh, we'll look to get you some good numbers at the wall and try to get you the best information that we can. So we're gonna wrap there for today. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Big, warm, fuzzy, secret heart Code monkey like you